How efficient are mini splits? Have you ever installed a mini split on a trailer? This is a mobile home and we're gonna take out the old electric furnace and we're installing a mini split. And I'm gonna show you how much current that electric furnace uses in the heat mode and how much current the mini split uses. You're watching HVAC Tips for Technicians slash homeowners. I'm Tad, let's get started. Right now we're delivering the materials and the equipment to the job. We're getting ready to get started and I'm gonna show you the before and I'm gonna show you the after. And we're gonna measure the current of the electric furnace. So we're in the backyard. Let me show you the outdoor unit. So here's the old outdoor unit we're taking out. And this is a two and a half ton. See that two and a half ton? Looks like max overcurrent protection is 30 amps. And it looks like the minimum is 18. So minimum total current is 18. Okay, so we're gonna take this out. This is where our outdoor unit is gonna be located. And then right here, we're gonna have our largest indoor wall mount air handler. And it's gonna be a 12K model. It's gonna be in the kitchen living room area. We're gonna have another unit over here for the smaller bedroom. And there's a doorway that leads to the bathroom. So that's gonna take care of the bathroom. Here's our line hide cover we're using. Here's our line sets. Then we've got our communication cable, 16-2 stranded, and then we've got our power cable, 14-3. So this is the power that comes from the outdoor unit to each indoor wall mount air handler. This is the communication cable that comes from the outdoor unit to each indoor wall mount air handler. The last unit is going to be over here on this side of the trailer, and it's going to be for the master bedroom and bathroom and we're probably going to come out go down back under the underpinning and then we're going to go across and then out to our outdoor unit we are going to upgrade this heating and cooling system and it is going to be so much more efficient let's talk about other options now there were a few other options we could have went with one was a package heat pump out here because the customer doesn't have gas so package heat pump right here and then duct work going in to the crawl space and then new duct work or tying on to the existing. The customer was concerned about the duct work that was already pre-existing in these trailers. It's very thin metal and mice can chew through that metal and he definitely wanted new duct work and that price would have been over $10,000. Uh, now that we're doing mini splits, it's going to be under $10,000 and it's going to be more efficient because the package unit could only go up to 16 sear. We were talking about doing a 14 sear. The other option is to do a split system like this, have an electric furnace inside and then the outdoor unit out here. Uh, but we're doing mini splits. This is the electric furnace we're taking out. And it's got two heat strips. So it's 10 kW. We're gonna turn our meter to AAC. Hit the select button. And we are going to put our clamp around one of the wires. And we're pulling 43 amps right now when this furnace is running in the heat mode. 43 amps. And that's 230 volts. With the electric furnace on, I'm measuring the supply air temperature and it is 99 degrees. That's the temperature that will output in heating and it's pulling 40 amps. 40 amps, 99 degrees. There's the model number of the furnace we're taking out. And you can see 236 volts, 60 amp breaker. There's the electric furnace. We're gonna put the largest wall mount air handler right here in the kitchen living room area. This is gonna be a 12K. Bedroom, we're gonna put a 7,000 BTU wall mount right there. And there's the kitchen living room. We got a seven, a nine, and a 12. This is the seven and the nine. So they are 32 inches. Day one, we are almost finished with today's work. The guys have been here about five, 
six hours and they've already got the unit inside the shed on and it's working. So I'm gonna show you the outdoor unit. This is the indoor unit. Turned out really nice. Look at that, beautiful. And then here's the outdoor unit sitting on a pad. We've got the line hide cover. We got the disconnect and then pulled an extra wire out here. The homeowner did. He wanted to put something else out here. So we ran that inside the disconnect and out for him. He's going to do something with this, but it looks good. Let me know what you think in the comments. This is the mini split for the shed. It's a single zone and it's 9,000 BTU. Love this shed. The homeowner did a great job insulating, wiring the shed, doing the sheetrock, the flooring. Looks really good. Let's go take a look at the units on the house. Brother James, y'all working hard up in here. Yes, sir. So there's the line sets sticking out and that's for the 12,000 BTU wall mount, kitchen, living room area. This is the 7,000 for that little room. Brother Nick, working hard, brother Nick. What's up, man? You guys are putting in the work. Let's see what you got going on over here, brother Nick. Oh, wow. That is nice. Line hide cover. Oh, you got a hole cover. Drop the drain down and then the hole cover where the line sets are going back underneath the trailer. Let's go take a look over there. There's where the line sets go underneath and then all the way over there to where the outdoor unit is going to be placed. Back on site, we finished the installation of the multi-zone mini split system. Here's the outdoor unit. Right now it's running in the cooling operation and I'm going to install a surge protective device made by Rector Seal. That way we can ensure that we are protected from any over voltages, any power surges. So I'm going to install this and then I'm going to show you the install. I'm going to install the surge protector made by Rector Seal. I'm going to show you how. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take and pull the disconnect. That way I don't have any live power and I am safe contents of the box looks like we've got a lock nut uh, looks like we've got this little mounting hardware and then we've got a looks like a rubber washer that's nice so I'm gonna take this knockout out and I'm going to put my rubber washer on and then I'm going to slide the wires through the knockout like this. This is half inch, so it fits perfectly. There's a green LED to indicate that this is working and we have protection. And it's so simple. If you want to make the installation more professional, then what you can do is you can take and install some ring terminals on these wires. And that's something that I will do for the ground. And it's very easy to install. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take our one wire and we're gonna install it underneath the end. This is for single phase units. You can use this for heat pumps, air conditioners, 120 volt, 240 volt. one of those wires that are black underneath the end. So this is our basically our L2 and this would be our L1. And remember when you get done tightening up the wire or the terminal, you want to make sure that you pull on this wire hard. That way you know it's not going to come out. And then pull on the other wires you've got underneath uh, if you can't make it work like this, then you need to put a couple wires underneath and then wire nut it or use some type of wire connector that's proper for uh, your application. 
So now I'm going to get a ring terminal. I'm going to put a ring terminal on this wire, the ground wire, and then I'll be able to put it underneath one of these uh, screws. So let's do that. Now we're going to install a ring terminal. And this makes a more secure connection. So we'll just take and push the wire into the sleeve and then we'll crimp it. Oh, look at that. Make sure you pull it. All right. Now you take and put your screw through that ring and then you just screw it down. And now our ground wire is securely connected. And that's how you install the surge protective device made by Rector Seal. This is the RSH50. You can get this for around $100 and I'll put the link in the description so you can go get one. Now we're gonna plug in. Now that we've got power to the equipment, you can see the green light on the RSH50. Here's the box. You can pause the video and read this or you can check out rectorseal.com. Turning on the wall mount air handler in the smaller bedroom. This is the 7000 BTU model and we're gonna push the power button. Turn it to heat, turn it up to the highest. And all right, let's go into the kitchen slash living room. Turning the 12,000 BTU wall mount air handler on heat. This is for the kitchen living room. 86. Now for the master bedroom. This is the 9,000 BTU wall mount air handler. Power. Turn on the heat mode. All right. Love the way this turned out. I love the line hide cover. And I also love this T. Look at this T. We got sweeping 90s. We got T's. It's running. This is 100% right here. Let's take some readings. The older system had a double pole 30 amp breaker for the outdoor unit and a 60 amp breaker double pole for the electric furnace inside. Now all we have is a double pole 25 amp breaker powering our multi-zone mini split system. Right now the equipment's ramped up and this is the amps. It's 4.5. So 5 amps, less than 5 amps. Let's go inside and let's see what the temperature is that the mini splits are producing. So let's go check the supply air temperature. Now we're gonna use the dual induct psychrometer to check the supply air temperature. So right now, Wow, look at this. Look at this. 98.8, 99 degrees. 98.8, I'm going to call it right there at 99 degrees. So before we're using an electric furnace and we are having 43 amps as our amp draw and 99 degree supplier temperature. Now we're pulling 5 amps, which is just unbelievable. So we're pulling 10 times the amps and producing the same exact temperature. I mean, this is awesome. Let me know in the comments what you think. Now that we know the voltage and the amperage of the electric furnace and the mini split, we can put that into a simple formula and use that math calculation to figure out how much power we're using, how much that power cost, and how much we're gonna save the homeowner. And this is something I really like because then I can tell the homeowner, in this amount of years, you're gonna get a return on your investment. So the money they spend on the equipment, they're gonna get that back and then they're gonna be saving money each month. If you wanna learn more about this, I did a video, click the link to the video or click the link down in the description of the video to learn more on how to figure out how much power you're using how much the power cost, and how much you can save by switching to a high efficiency heat pump. Here's that line hide cover again on the end here. Drain coming out. I'm gonna show you the mini split with the cover on. 
Let me know in the comments what you think of the job. I think it looks beautiful. This is a two ton unit. We got a total of three indoor units, three pipe connections. We've got a max overcurrent protection. You can see 25 amps. Minimum circuit amps is 19. Brad, we just finished your job. I know that when we first came out here, we were looking to do a package unit, but we ended up not having enough room and it wouldn't have been good for that application. So we ended up offering the mini splits as an option. Now that we've installed and the project is finished and you've been able to see it in the heating and cooling operation, are you happy? Are you satisfied? What do you think? I am absolutely satisfied. And if y'all out there listen to this and you need a wonderful, wonderful contractor, go with Fuller Heating and Cooling. And, I, and they didn't pay me to say that. I'm telling you, I am awesome. sold. I really am. And yeah. I mean that with all my heart. God bless you guys. Awesome. Thank you, Brad. Thank you, sir. That's great. You've been watching HVAC Tips for Technicians slash Homeowners. I'm Tad, and I'll keep you cool if you let me.